This is session five, review and edit clips. Editing video is the main reason to purchase Premiere Pro. In this session, we'll learn how to review, mark, and edit clips from the source monitor into the timeline. In addition, we'll learn how to automatically configure a sequence to match the video format shot by the camera. There are many different ways to manipulate media. We can use keyboard shortcuts, on-screen buttons, or dragging things with the mouse. This session is an overview of the process. Chapter 5 covers editing in much more detail. So let me show you how to review a clip in the source monitor using the keyboard, using buttons, or dragging the playhead with the mouse. Then we'll create a new sequence and configure it automatically to match the video format of your clips. Then we'll edit a clip to the timeline using both mouse and keyboard, and we'll display a clip full screen. Let's start by reviewing a clip. The easiest way to load a clip from either the media browser or the project window into the source monitor is to simply double click it. When we double click it, the image shows up inside the source monitor. Let's double click another one, and let's double click another one, and let's double click another one. Although it looks like we only have one image loaded in the source monitor, and we do, there's a pop up menu up here that allows us to quickly switch from one image to another, and it will remember the most recent images that we've loaded up into the source monitor. When it comes time to play, we can click this button, which plays or stops, spacebar to play, spacebar to stop. We can also use the JKL keys. The letter L plays forward, K stops, J plays backwards, K stops. Hold K and L down at the same time, it goes slow motion forward. K and J down at the same time, goes slow motion backward or type L a couple times, it goes double speed forward, J a couple times, goes double speed back. The process of marking a clip means to indicate where you want that particular shot to start, we're going to mark an in, and where you want that shot to end, we're going to mark an out. Marking is always done at the position of the playhead, so I want to say, let's start with her hands on her ears and type the letter I to set an in, and we'll go over to about there, and we'll type the letter O to set an out. We can jump to the end by typing Shift I, jump to the out by typing Shift O, Shift I, and Shift O, jump between the two. And what we've just done is we have marked the clip to get ready to edit, except notice that the timeline window is totally blank. This means that we haven't created any sequences. Now normally when you start Premiere for the first time it automatically creates a sequence, but I deleted it because I wanted to go through the whole process of creating a sequence. To create a new sequence we could go up to the file menu, go down to New, Sequence, Keyboard Shortcut is Command N, or we could go down to this icon right here which is the New Item icon, click it, and again we can create a new sequence it pops up the same dialog that we saw when we were creating a new project. We get to specify what this format is. And I'm going to pretend that I'm working with DVNTSC, which is 30 frames a second, and we'll work with widescreen, and we'll click OK. We'll leave the rest of the settings alone. There it opens the sequence up inside the timeline window, and it gives it a name. Because I've been doing <laughs> some rehearsal, it's called Sequence 4. I'm going to click directly on the name and rename it. And I have learned that because the project panel always alphabetizes material, I start with a space. That way all of my sequences bubble up to the top. SEQ dash, because it makes me feel good. Mm, my first edit, because i got to give it a name. Press the Enter key. And now it automatically names that file. And if I click this, it says sort alphabetically in descending order, sort alphabetically in ascending order. There's my sequence. Okay, watch this. I'm now going to edit this down to the timeline. There's my sequence, my first edit. I'm all excited. See these two buttons right here? This button does an overwrite edit. This button does an insert edit. When you're getting started with a new project, use the Overwrite button. We'll talk more about these in Chapter 5 when we talk about editing. Okay, you ready? Watch this. One, two, three, click. And there's my clip in the timeline. Except we have a problem. We've actually got several problems. The first problem is this is an HD clip and I set my sequence to be NTSC, which is standard def. I'm only seeing a small portion of that shot. Second, this is a 
25 frame a second shot. It's shot pal. This is NTSC. It's at 30 frames a second. My frame rates don't match. Oh, calamity. How am I supposed to figure this out? Do I have to be a rocket scientist and decode the video before I can even edit? And the answer is in the past. <laughs> yes, but not now. I'm going to select this clip here and just hit the delete key and make it disappear. Highlight, delete. What I want to do is I want to create a new sequence and have it automatically configured to match my clip. So I'm going to grab my youth culture, drag the clip on top of where it says new item. It automatically says, hey, you want to create a new sequence. And you're going to edit it based upon the in and the out that we've already set. Notice the in and the out are set here. They're reflected in the timeline hands-on headsets in both cases, and it named the sequence after my clip. Well, that's kind of foolish because I want to call this my sequence, so space SEQ, my second edit. And I'll just highlight this first one, hit the delete key, and that easy it is to delete the sequence to resort. Just click on that up or down arrow and it automatically realphabetizes everything. I could, if I wanted to, create a new bin. We'll call this media. Grab my clips and drag my clips. I'm just dragging a rectangle to select them. And now I've put all of my media inside that bin. And there's my edit. There's my shot, spacebar to play. And we're watching our dancer. But wouldn't it be cool if I could do this with keyboard shortcuts? And the answer is we can. Let's just add our Peaks movie here. And let's set an arbitrary in, the letter I. Let's set an arbitrary out, the letter O. We've already seen that we can do an overwrite edit by clicking here, but there's a keyboard shortcut associated with it, which is the period key. So let's go down to the timeline. The selected window's got a gold box around it, and type a period. Boom. I've edited my peaks down. I now have my dancing girl, and I've got my mountain peaks. The up and down arrow keys allow us to move between clips. One more thing to try. See these two icons here? If you grab this, you drag just the video down to the timeline. If you grab this, you drag just the audio down, except there's no audio with this clip, which is why this icon is grayed back. So I can drag my clip, audio only or video only. I can click this particular icon to overwrite it, or I can use the keyboard shortcut of a period key, and then when I'm ready to play it back, spacebar plays. And spacebar stops, J key goes backwards, K stops, L key goes forward. That works in all the windows exactly the same way. What we've just done is we took a clip, we double-clicked it to load it up into the source window, we set an in, we set an out, we then click the button to edit it down as an overwrite edit to the timeline, and we are starting to edit. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention. Remember I said we could take a clip full screen. Well, not only can we adjust the size of a monitor by grabbing the lines between two monitors or the horizontal line to increase the size. If we're in the source monitor, pressing the tilde key blows the window up, but I see all of my machine controls. What happens if you want to study the actual image itself? Well, what you do is you hold control tilde and it blows up full screen. Notice there's no machine controls. Now you need to use the spacebar to start, spacebar to stop, or the J key to go backwards, K, L. And then to get back again, control tilde, and you're back again. You have the ability to blow the screen up full by hitting tilde, or all the way up by control tilde. Tilde, by the way, is the key that's right above the tab key in the top left corner of your timeline. Premiere is optimized to make editing fast and efficient. As you'll learn in Chapter 5, there are a wealth of editing tools and shortcuts that we can use to give us complete control over the editing process. Thanks for watching.